Eon Kid is one of those shows I vaguely recall watching when I was a kid. Now, years later, after it's aired, I decided to take a look back and see what the show is all about and how I feel about it. To start off, Eon Kid was originally called Iron Kid, but the name was changed to avoid legal troubles in English-speaking countries. It was a joint production by South Korean and Spanish companies. It was produced by Daewon CI and Design Storm in South Korea and BRB International and Television Española in Spain. Manga Entertainment distributed the show in the US. You can currently watch the show on Amazon streaming service or you can watch it for free on YouTube on the YouTube channel Anima Kids. I looked for DVDs of the show and I could only find DVDs for like the first 10 episodes or so. I don't know if all the episodes were released on the physical format here in the US. If they didn't, I would guess that the reason why is because in episode 11, the main character, who is a child, almost gets gunned down by one of the main antagonists. I don't want to give too many spoilers or any at all. So I'll give a quick rundown of the first episode. I'll talk about some of the characters. And from there, I'll just talk about my overall feelings after watching the entire show. To start with, the show begins by telling us that there was a robot war a hundred years before the story we're following takes place. It was led by a robot called the General, and he's leading his forces against humanity. A human named Eon puts on a metal fist and challenges the General and manages to defeat him. It isn't stated outright, I believe, in the first episode, but Eon actually dies in the process. From there, it takes us to the present day, where the robot that was standing next to Eon is being chased through a bit of a valley by some ninja-looking robots, and their boss named Black Beauty appears, and she lets us know that Eon's companion is named Gaff. Gaff manages to escape by throwing down some smoke bombs. And as he's making his way away from them, he drops off his box down what looks like a cannon. The box ends up getting destroyed in the process of reaching the bottom of wherever the cannon leads to. And it reveals the Fist of Eon. And from there we cut off to the intro. I think intros are important for all shows, and I believe the intros I've seen for Eon Kid are pretty good. The one complaint I have is that they're fun to listen to, but you should not look at the intro as it's running because it spoils basically everything that happens. The music is credited to two people. Their names are Javier Mayado and Kang Min Rea, but the intros themselves are sung by different people and artists. For the Korean version, it's called Run to the Sky, and it's sung by the pop band MC The Max. There's two English intros, one for the UK and one for the US. I couldn't find anything on what the US intro is called or who made it, which is a shame, because I want to give credit where credit is due. The UK version of the intro, which is my personal favorite version of the intro that I've listened to, is called Wonder Boy. And it's sung by Eric Nilsson. I believe the UK intro is the general European Union version of the intro. I'm assuming that because Anima Kids is owned by BRB International. And on the YouTube channel you can see different language versions that are mostly found in Europe and also Russia. We finally see our main character Marty running around being chased and carrying what looks like an engine block. He's with his pet robot dog Buttons and we see him show an incredible feat of strength throwing Buttons across a ravine and we learn that Buttons has an extendable tail which Marty uses to swing across and get away from the people chasing him. From there we transition to a scene of some guy buying scrap from different people 
Marty meets up with his dad and is excited to show him the thing he found, which turns out to actually be an engine block. And his dad gets mad at Marty because he was scrounging around the place near the Iron Tower, which is the central landmark and political power in the area they live in. This flower shirt guy approaches and says that he would buy the engine block off of them for like 200 wands or whatever. Which gets Marty mad because he says it's worth at least 500. But of course his dad says to just let him handle it. Things really start to kick off at this point. We have a quick scene with Gaff thinking to himself about how Black Beauty is back and that means that the general is about to be revived. Then we have a quick scene with some robot and Black Beauty is behind him along with some guy on a hovercraft sort of thing and they're talking about how dangerous the fist is and how it has to be found by them before they revive the general and from here the guy on the hover thing floats off to the iron tower to meet with duke von reimer then we cut to the duke who learns that someone named ali escaped we see that ali is a girl she's on like a hover moped and she's running away being chased by some of the security robots they don't want to hurt her but one of them is kind of stupid and shoots a cannon at her after transforming into it. Marty's there because he just wanted to check things out and he helps Ali escape. But in the process both of them get stuck in a hole. Then we learn that Duke Von Reimer has been helping reassemble the general, although under contract. And he obviously doesn't seem to like the conditions he's working under. He gets threatened by the floating guy and the green robot. We cut back to Marty and Ali and Buttons down in the hole. Buttons wanders off to try and find a way out but he finds the Fist of Eon and he brings it back to Marty who thinks it's cool and puts it on like an idiot and naturally the Fist of Eon latches onto Marty. The Fist that Marty puts on suddenly starts glowing and shoots a beam of light into the air which allows the security robots and some ninja bots to find him. The security bots get there first and Marty and the group make their escape but not before the fist takes control for a little bit and Marty punches one of the security bots in the chest and we end off the episode with some ninja bots looking at Marty and company. Naturally the first two or three episodes are mostly setting things up for what we'll see down the line. My one complaint with the show is that it takes a long time for some characters to be named and the ones that are named when they first appear, you have a very good chance of not actually knowing what they're called. I understand that not all of the characters are main characters, but when they're very important to the plot, I would think that knowing what they're called, at least, is important. Like, we learn Gaff's name, Black Beauty, Marty, Buttons, Ally. I don't know what to say about Buttons. I, I don't like Buttons. He, he's... F tier. Put him in F tier. I don't want him. Marty's dad is called Charlie. The guy in the flower shirt is a little important. We don't know his name until like the ninth or 10th episode and his name is Jimmy. He's mostly called flower shirt guy by Buttons and Marty. Duke Von Reimer is a very important character of the plot so it's nice that we know his name. The guy that floats around is called Dr. Chen and he's also very important to the plot of the show. The green robot guy is named Scar. These are only some of the characters that we'll get to know during the show. So now I'll just like do a quick rundown of some of the characters and what they're about and hopefully avoid spoilers. To start off with the good guys, there's the Central Defense Federation. They're led by Chief Gibson and their primary goal is to defend against threats by the general and his forces. Chief Gibson is a pretty cool dude. He's very against sending Ali and Marty into danger since they're just children, but he has to relent and let them do their thing because he's got no other choice. There's no other way of defeating the general without Marty and his fist. There's Kelly, Chief Gibson's secretary. There's Sergeant Camo, who was originally part of the military, which later on becomes absorbed by the CDF. There's Ace Squadron which is a squadron of robots that can transform into planes. There's another group of robots that can tunnel through the ground, but I don't recall ever learning what they're named or what their squadron is called. 
We have Violet who's like a spy and she uses sonic weapons. There's Captain Magnum who was created by the CDF and is supposed to be like their secret weapon. He can fly and turn his hands into cannons like Mega Man. Then we have Shadow, a reformed robot that occasionally turns back to being evil. I think it's kind of weird with him because... I don't entirely understand how you can reform a robot without getting into their head and reprogramming them. There's also George. He's a cool guy that helps out Marty and Ali. Because Ali ran away from the Iron Tower, she and Marty have a bounty on their heads of 5 million G. George has no intention of turning them in because they're just kids and he thinks it's messed up that people are going so hard after them. Hey, it's me. It's me from the future. I just want you to know I forgot to mention Master Zen. I know I shouldn't be saying this because it could possibly destroy the universe or whatever, but I just thought you needed to know. Moving on from the mostly good guys, there's the neutral characters, or at least characters I'm calling neutral. To start with, there's this trio, Auk, and the other two, and that's how he refers to their group. We don't learn the other two's names until far into the show and they're called Tito and Wadi. Ak wants to be the greatest thief in the world after his hero the Great Spinoza and Tito and Wadi are just a couple of good dumb boys that are being led along by Ak. I mean Tito has do the right thing on the back of his shirt. They don't want to be thieves. They mostly serve as comic relief. There's a biker gang the only character from their group that's named is their leader, who's called Tua. Tua! He took the robot sumo world by storm, but was expelled for his excessive cruelty! Which is a shame, because I wouldn't expect the normal bikers to be named, but I at least give the guy with, with the screw nails a name. He's kind of interesting. There's Orange Mama, who controls Orange Valley. She has three bodyguards, and it took me way too long to figure out her bodyguards' names. I believe the first one that's named is called Spark. His name is just quickly whispered by Orange Mama. And you never hear his name again for the rest of the show. The second one who I figured out the name to is this guy with the gas tank. His name is Smell. He sprays a knockout gas that somehow also makes robots fall asleep. The last guy who I assume is their leader, I'm calling Styx. Not once did I hear his name. The only hint I have to his name is this close-up on a hockey puck he shoots out of his chest. So he's sticks now and forever in my heart. And finally we have Jenny. She's a child and she acts like a child. That's all you need to know about her. We also have some wrestling robots. I think they just call it wrestling for dumb Americans back in like 2007. They're MMA fighters. There's Sam Pack. There's this guy whose name I can't remember because he got his butt kicked by Tua. And finally, their champion, and the guy that everyone's afraid of, Tony. <laughs> Tony, give me some cereal. <laughs> we also have Mr. Mike, who is a Mike. He's the announcer guy. Moving on to the actual antagonists, let's start off with someone I haven't named yet, such as Steel Jaw Jack. He was hired by Duke Von Reimer to hunt down and bring back Allie. He doesn't really care what he does to Marty or Buttons. Steel Jaw Jack looks like a 40s gangster or a 20s gangster. He drives an old school looking car. He almost killed Marty with a gun. And he has spiky boots. There's Iger. I won't say too much about him. There's the four invincible lords. They are named Lightning, Wind, Rain, and Cloud. Rain is the leader and all four of these guys show up late into the show. They're these centaur robots that we learn about at like the final episode or two. They're led by a gold centaur. They're apparently the reason why the general was so successful in his war against the humans or whatever. And finally we have the Gigantor. I won't say too much about this robot. Next I'd like to talk about the fights in the show. It's mostly Marty learning how to fight in the first segment of the show and then things really start kicking off in the second half of the show. 
as Marty trains and learns to harness the power of Ki. That's right. Everyone in this universe can use Ki, even the robots. <laughs> I don't know how the robots can use Ki, but they can. They even have named moves that they comment on. I don't want to give too much away, but I'd just like to take a moment to appreciate this fight between Gaff and Steeljaw Jack. For a little bit of context, Steeljaw was gonna murder Marty with a gun. This definitely wouldn't fly here in America. They would definitely cut this show off. Or maybe they didn't. Maybe they just edited it out. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a four kids situation. But here's the fight. Let's enjoy it. How is that? It might not be that impressive. But it shows that they were at least thinking and trying to figure out fun and creative ways of using 3D environments and characters to make interesting fights. I just like to think this is a step forward for 3D animation and 3D shows, which would lead us to shows like the 3D Ninja Turtles, which had very nice fight sequences. This show was a lot of fun. There's about 26 episodes of Young Kid, with episodes 25 and 26 being devoted to the finale. There's a lot I want to say about the show, but... I won't because spoilers. I know I mostly talked about the first episode and the characters, but I just want you to know that this is a good show and it can get kind of wild with what happens. These two kids get into some serious danger. Marty goes down some twists and turns trying to master the fist of Eon. Some things happen with Ali that have some implications. Ali is mostly used as like the damsel in distress in the first half of the show. But when they finally give her agency, she puts in work and she goes into the thick of it to try and help and do her best. Also, here's a list of the voice actors. I'm going to assume they're the only voice actors because I couldn't find anything about any other voice actors. This show was a lot of fun. I don't know how to talk about it without spoiling anything, but I hope I at least spark a little interest in anyone that hasn't seen it before. Before I go, I just want you to know that there's some people trolling about with this show. I saw this animation on YouTube that claimed there was going to be a second season, and it's just Marty color shifted green. They're using footage from the show mixed with animations of stock characters you could probably buy at some asset store and i found this thing randomly about a potential movie that'll be released in 2030 <laughs> i tried looking for information on this alleged movie coming out but i couldn't find anything let's have some fun let's read this the eon kid movie is in american Korean Spanish computer CGI 3D animated film directed by Tony Leondis and written by Eric Siegel and Mike White based on Ionke TV series 2008 by Dewan Media Design Storm and BRB International by Heidi FMA Abdel Bassett Ben Diskin as Marty Ionke Dove Cameron as Ali Bobby Moynihan as Buttons and Bruno Mars as Gaff with the film stars regular voice cast and features the voice of Zen Zendia, Aniston Reek, Tiffany Haddish, Stephanie Beatrice, Charlie Ray, Russell Brand, James Corden, Anthony Ramos, Karen Sony, Flula, Flula Borg, and Sadie Stanley. It will release date by Mike White. Oh, oh wait, it will capitalize his last name in March 2nd, 2030. <laughs> okay, I don't know who most of these actors are, but why are you through the board? Who is Leila? Who is Zia, the evil robot? Mina, the female Eon kid? Oh, hey, they mentioned Jimmy. Huh. Sadie Stanley as herself? I don't know anything about this person. Alright, I've had enough. This is weird. It's obviously fake. Goodbye. I'm sorry I mentioned this. <laughs>